the rest of the story. In medieval England, the true physicians were monks, but their religious beliefs prevented them from causing a patient to bleed, and therefore all surgery was relegated to barbers. And even to this day, surgeons in Great Britain are addressed as Mr. instead of Dr. You will understand, then, that no disrespect is intended as you're introduced to Mr. Harold Ridley, a distinguished member of Britain's Royal College of Surgeons, who for many years was head of the ophthalmic department at London's St. Thomas Hospital. In fact, it was Harold Ridley who performed the first successful intraocular implant, the currently accepted surgical cure for cataracts. The human eye has its own lens called the crystalline lens. Sometimes it becomes diseased and grows progressively cloudy until the victim is all but utterly blind. Intraocular implantation, the surgical procedure first successfully employed by Mr. Ridley, involves the removal of the crystalline lens and its replacement with a synthetic one. Mr. Ridley was not the first man to conceive such a procedure, far from it. The notorious 18th century Venetian Casanova, actually proposed this surgery to counteract cataracts. Until then, the only alternative to blindness from cataract was a treatment called couching, in which a sharp tap on the eyeball knocked the diseased crystalline lens back into the eye. Light was admitted once more, although proper focusing was impossible. Casanova had the right idea, of course. The surgeons of his day would hardly have been equipped to carry it out to replace the natural lens with an artificial one. So for the next 200 years, the best that surgeons could do was to remove the cloudy crystalline lens and prescribe a pair of inadequate, uncomfortable glasses. But then along came Mr. Harold Ridley. Now, often ophthalmology students would hear the learned surgeon say, quote, why not replace the crystalline lens? As though they had invented a new concept. And time after time, Mr. Ridley would have to explain that implantation of untested and incompatible materials in the human eye could prove disastrous. In 1949, however, Mr. Ridley was visited at St. Thomas Hospital by a former patient. The surgeon examined his eyes, determined that his old injuries had healed, but wait, there was something foreign in one eye, an undisturbed sliver of something left over from the time that the eye had been injured years before, and that was how it all began. That was the day Mr. Ridley discovered the material that he would use one day to make artificial lenses for human eyes, lighter in weight than either glass or crystal. It had also proved compatible with eye tissue, for Harold Ridley's former patient had been an RAF pilot during the Battle of Britain. German aircraft had tried to shoot him down, had in fact blown the canopy of his plane to bits, had blown the canopy to tiny bits one of which had been propelled into his eyes. His Spitfire canopy was made of plexiglass. The history of medicine relates that a British surgeon named Harold Ridley unveiled the eyes of millions by surgically conquering cataracts. Well, that is true. Only now you know the rest of the story.